הכל חייב מקרי עושה. We have a principle of mitzvah sasei shes mangoromo, noshim turas. A time determined mitzvah, a woman is exempt. Kriyashma, a woman does not have to say Kriyashma. Lulav, a woman does not have to take a lulav. Sit in the sukkah, a woman does not have to sit in the sukkah. Why? Because it's only specific times. It's not an ongoing obligation, correct? Because matzah is the exception. Kiddush is the exception. Because that's linked to the negative commandments. Because regarding negative commandments, we don't differentiate between the positive and the between time determined or not. So good. So if on a Torah level, mitzvah sasei is among Roma, a positive command, which is time determined, a woman's exempt, so on a rabbinic level, what would you say? Definitely she should be exempt. But yet we find in two instances that she's obligated. Kriyas Megillah and Dalit Koksis. Right? That the Gemara asked the question. They're both rabbinic and it's, it's only, it's time determined. And yet a woman has, is obligated in the reading of the Megillah and Dal Koks. The Gemara answers, Afin ho yubos this. That since the women were also beneficiaries of the miracle of Purim, and the redemption from Egypt, which we commemorate through the four cups, therefore, that's the exception. That's why they're obligated. So, Hakol Chayv Mekriyosa. All Jews are obligated in the reading. Anoshim, Vidnoshim, Vigeri, Vavodim, Shukhrori. Men, women, converts, Canaanite slaves. Right? Canaanite slave, which has the obligation of a woman. He has the obligation of a woman. Excuse me. No, no. Avodim Shukhrorim. Although he was a slave, but if he was emancipated, which he's a Jew today, right? Even though it wasn't through his own initiative, like like a ger, a ger is a convert. He, through his own initiative, he, he converts. Everid Meshuchor, that's an emancipated slave. He's only a Jew because his master emancipated him. Nevertheless, he's a full Jew. He's obligated. Umechant chinas haktan l'krosa, and based on chinuch, you you actually encourage and you condition the child. He should also read it. Read the Megillah. Because they're not beneficiaries. Right? We're beneficiaries because if our grandparents didn't merit the miracle, we wouldn't be here. The guy, his, his ancestors were never, were never part of the decree. True. But because a convert doesn't, doesn't. So maybe you'd say the same thing here. No, there, that there has to do with the text. Okay. It's an old discussion we had, if you remember. You know, we say, Birch Zashachar, Shlo Asani Goy, the convert. Does he say, You thank God you were not made a Gentile? Shlo Asani Goy. Right. But Gentile says it. Because he's, 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 he's a new creation. Gershon's got caught in he's a newborn person. It's like he's, he's, new, he's a new creation. Therefore, he could say it. Right? Okay, so let's see. V'noshim, v'avta kriya. He's alluding to what the Gemara says. V'avta kriya, he dover shas mangroma. Although the reading is, is time determined, and women are exempt in that kind of mitzvah. Kol mokum chayovo shem yubo sadness, according to the Gemara, because they were beneficiaries of the nes. The mitchilo hoy sa gzer gamalei, and they were violated. Men, women, and children. So therefore, a person, women that in Europe didn't necessarily come to shul. So a, the father or the man has an obligation to read the Megillah at home on behalf of the women. But he's speaking about the they girls and the attendants, you know, in Europe. A housekeeper. She would do cleaning, she would do cooking, she would take care of the children. And they were Jewish, they, they, and usually very often she was a, a, um, an orphan, an orphan girl. Jew, Jewish, uh, orphan girl. You know, she'd do the cooking, do many, many things. And there's a famous story with, um, with Rabbi Sosalanter. You know, Rabbi Sosalanter was the leading Torah sage of his generation. Comes to a person's home, and um, they're washing. And he washes, he uses, the Gemara says, and the Chaber rules that when you wash, the Yosef Naim, you should use an abundance of water. It's based on the Gemara in Chulin, and then Shulchan Aruch says you should pour with an abundance of water. Why? It's a school of Hashiros. It, it brings about wealth. It's a school of Hashiros. 
Rabbi Shalom Salanta comes to this person's home. He washes with a, the minimal amount of water. They're covering his hand. So he's, he's amazed. He says, the holy rabbi, he's supposed to this and that and barely cover your hand. This is the question. Who brings the water into the house? The orphan girl, she has to go out to the well and draw the water. You mean, I'm going to be on her, on her account? I'm not going to be a tzaddik on her account. Therefore, I'll use the minimal amount of water. That was Rishon Salanter. Famous story with the Chobetz Chaim. Chobetz Chaim, person comes to his house, and normally, you know, people, you know, they, they go into other levels, other worlds. They close their eyes, and they start saying the different kinds of uh, uh, paragraphs from, from Zohar and everything else till they get, finally get to the Kiddush, Friday night. It takes maybe two and a half hours. And the uh, person, person comes to the, was used to this, the, the guest, comes to Chobetz Chaim, doesn't say Shalom Aleichem, doesn't say anything, Kiddush immediately, straight into the meal. So the person says, yeah, there's the Holy Chavetz Chaim. He says, what's this? He says, you know, the orphan girl who works in this house, she's been cooking, she was up all Thursday night preparing for Shabbos. What, I'm going to be at Tzadik. Here she hasn't eaten. Here she wants to get to bed early, Friday night. I should delay her, her own Shabbos with, with whatever it is. And stand, this is greatness. You know? If it's you by yourself is one thing, but you gotta you have to be sensitive to think about the well, wh look what I'm giving up, at what cost. If it's at your cost is one thing, but this is somebody else's cost. That was the Chavetz Chaim. Famous story: we saw Salanter, he was in Vilna, and he had a student, one of his students, and they davened Rosh Hashanah in a very small location, and one of his students said to Musaf. Musaf is lengthy on Rosh Hashanah, three hours. Three hours Musaf. And he was finished the Musaf, felt he really prayed well, and he was proud of himself. Right after davening, he says, you know, he jumped it to, uh, to his Rebbe, or Rosh Hashanah, or laces into him, gives him, really criticizes him, admonishes him, rebukes him. He says, here I do something so special. That's that's that 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 that's that's what, why, why do I deserve it? No, he, no, he had he wasn't a chazan, he wasn't a chazan, he was an individual. He said, do you realize? You daven at the door. The fresh air had to come into the room by you standing there for such an extended period. You, the fresh air couldn't come into the room, so everybody suffered because you 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 said a three hour shmot esrei. That 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 but you understand. Any person who's a true, we talk true Godel by Torah, Torah sage, as I say, the chesed overshadows the greatness in Torah. But what is that sensitivity? Where does it emanate from? It emanates because of the greatness in Torah. My Mashgiach, who was a Mir Mashgiach from Europe, Mir, he told me he, he came from a town called Kabrin. Kabrin was a stone's throw from Brisk. Kabrin, Co K Kabrin. And he said, you know, in America, we hear about Rav Chaim Briska, Rav Chaim Salvechik, you know, which Rav Chaim was one of a kind of a genius, and his level of dissemination and his analysis of Torah is one of a kind. He says, in Europe, Rav Chaim was known for his chesed. His level of chesed, if you read it, is a book of the Briska Rav, his son. He never slept in his own bed. Everything in the house was, was taken by other people. Anything but he wanted, his house was, was Grand Central Station poor orphans, people from out of town, destitute people. It was like, you know, it was an open uh, hospitality center. That was Reb Chaim. Jesus Reb Chaim was known for his chesed even more in Europe than for his greatness in Torah. I'm not telling stories now. So what, what is it about? Okay. I mean, you read the back of the old Mameno. I see that. Okay. Okay. What? No, so I'm just saying, the, where did it emanate from? That he had such such chesed? It all emanates from the Torah. If you then you have th that sensitivity. You know, I have it's him, it's me. But if you you have that level of the story, there's a book, a very good book. It was for the 25th yard set of Moshe. Art School put out a 25th uh, yard set edition, 25th anniversary of the yard site story the Ramosha was before Pesach he was walking and in those days you know you had tenements they never elevators in the buildings and Ramosha already then was like maybe in the 60s 
and he says to the first woman, you know, I have some money here. I can bring somebody who lives on the fifth floor because, you know, they need it for Pesach. They had an envelope with money. So the person, the person walking was a person maybe in his 20s. He said, give me that. I'll walk up to five, fl five flights. You have to walk up five flights. He said, no, I want to do it myself. And he walked up and gave the man the envelope. Ramosha came to this poor person, and he sees Ramosha coming to his door at greater value to him than the envelope with the money. You understand? It's, it's who brings it. To what degree, who put himself out? 20 year old, he said, Ramosha sent money. Okay, thank you, Ramosha. But it's the person himself of that level. I mean, he was one of the lady, leading Torah sages of the generation. He should go out of his way, walk five flights, where it's difficult, because he wants to make sure that I have my, my, my the means for Pesach. It's, the per, it's, the whole, it's a whole different thing. But who, who are, it's here. You want to take it out, you take it out. You, know, you send messenger service. You know? It's, it's three, three, three buildings down, messenger over. My time is too valuable, and I can't get over to your office.